I wanted to show you the wonderful advantages of a machine quilting presser foot. And I think the best way to show is to demonstrate the same task done with a regular presser foot and then done again with the quilting presser foot. So I'm going to machine applique um, some additional prints onto this fabric using my regular presser foot first. I'm going to just lay this kind of where I want it. Figure out how I'm going to stitch around it. And go ahead and like to stop with the needle down in this instance. It does not have to be absolutely perfect because then you go back around with the zigzag, of course. I'm not going to show you the part about zigzagging. That's not really what this is about. Just basically what I'm trying to show is how easy it is to attach these two pieces. over top of. Okay, now following my little line, stitch, and this will give a 3D effect to my little project using this wonderful popular print that everybody recognizes. A little special something with it. I'll take this piece and using my machine quilting. This presser foot actually I think is for my embroidery, but I like, I have two of them. I have, they do kind of the same thing, but my favorite is the one that's for the machine embroidery. This one I think is, is the one that's specifically for quilting. But it's just my personal preference. Attach that one. The difference with this one is that it does not touch the fabric. The fabric is free moving underneath the presser foot. Yet it's still, I don't know, it's still guiding or whatever, protecting the needle or something. Also, I can drop the feed dogs of my machine. These right here are the feed dogs. And I can drop them and it gives even more free motion. Sometimes I drop the feed dogs, sometimes I don't. I just forget about it and it's not, it doesn't seem to hurt my what I'm doing if I forget to do it. So sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Um, most machines it probably is better if you do, but I, I don't know. I'm not sure of that. I just know my own machine. Now, I am hand guiding the machine is not guiding the fabric at all. I am guiding it. Therefore, I don't have to make turns. Now, of course, my stitches aren't as straight, but why this is wonderful is as your project gets big, you don't have to worry about stopping and making sure that needle's down and making a turn. You can just follow, as you get better at it, you just follow whatever line you want to follow. If you're following a design in the fabric, follow it. If you're making one up in your own head, you just follow it. You're able to just keep going free motion instead of stop, turn, stop, turn. Um, it's just, it's so neat. And then, let me do it one more time, demonstrate one more time. Lay this here. Put my presser foot down, free, free of all pressures. And I just am outlining this little rectangle. And there it is. It's on there. Now, you may think, you know, so what? Why is this so big of a deal? Well, when you're going to do your quilting, 
take. Pretend this is your backing material, your quilting material, and your top piece of your quilt, your project, or whatever. You have those three layers together, you put it on the machine, and you're able to machine quilt your project. Now, of course, I would suggest you practice this with something really small. Um, if you want it to be something you can use, do a pot holder, do coasters, do, do just something small for around the house or whatever, and practice a couple times before you tackle, you know, your, your quilt that you want to be special for somebody. Um, practice your technique and see if you got the feel for it. And if you don't feel like you have the feel for it, then take your project to somebody have them professionally do it. But yes, you can machine quilt at home. And this is how I do it, is using this wonderful little piece. Or I do sometimes use this one. So I'm not saying that I don't like it. It's just, I don't know. Uh, I've just gotten in the habit of using the other one more. All right. Well, good luck.